In the autumn season of the year 2017, Yan Mu is having a fight with his wife when she asks him to take her brother Xi Wan out as he buys to want a car. Yan Mu refuses to follow her order saying that he has no more money which angers his wife as she slaps him asking where is his salary for this month. Yan Mu is fed up when his wife throws water at him and shouts at her saying that he has no money because her parents bought a car and house for her brother's wedding from his money and even if his income is over 100 million it would not be enough for her family. His wife says that they are his family too but Yan Mu angrily replies that he has had enough of this family to which his wife says that then he should go and die if he doesn't care about this family. Yan Mu replies that he is not afraid of dying and listening to this his wife says that he should wait for her to buy an accident insurance before doing something like that. Shocked by his wife's cold behavior, Yan Mu doesn't waste any time and jumps out of the building, killing himself. Surprisingly, instead of fully dying he travels back in time to July 2009 when he was asking for his wife Ilixil's hand in marriage to her family. He is shocked to wake up back in time but this time decides to do things differently as he suffered a lot at the hands of the Fang family's greediness in his past life and as they demand $400,000 as the bride price. He refuses to accept their offer. The Fang family is shocked by his answer, but he stands up saying that he will not give them a penny as a bride price. Ilixil is surprised by his behavior and asks him why is he doing this to which Yan Mu replies that she should ask this question to her mother as it seems like she is trying to sell her daughter instead of marrying her. Ilixil replies that it was not easy for her parents to raise her so they should get some bride price but Yan Mu is not phased by her this time and asks what she can give him in return instead of a loser brother who only wants money. Hearing Yan Mu talking about him, her brother Shi Wan goes to hit Yan but this time Yan decides to fight back and easily pins down Shi Wan. Ilixil's mother shouts at him to let Shi go saying he is his brother too but Yan replies that he is not married so Fang's family is not his family yet and announces that from now on he has nothing to do with this family. As he starts to walk away, Ilixil asks if their relationship is not worth the money but Yan only replies that if she ever thought about how hard his parents had to work to come up with half a million dollars, and continues to walk away. Yan remembers that in the past life, his father had to buy a lottery ticket and hoped to win it to pay the bride price and collapsed when he heard about the bonus they got. Yan walks out of their house, saying that they need a cash cow instead of him. He goes to the city later where he sees the poster about the lottery, mentioning that the current double color ball first prize jackpot has accumulated to 100 million yuan. Yan remembers from his previous life that this is the right lottery, the first prize of the same period, and his father's selection is only one number away. But there is a whole billion various reasons as the number of the strings in his memory is too deep. He goes to a nearby shop to buy a lottery ticket and is still standing there when he sees his father entering the shop so he quickly hides behind a wall. His father enters the shop, confused after seeing a glimpse of Yan because according to them he went to Fang's house today. Yan silently watches his father goes to buy the lottery ticket, praying to win the lottery ticket so Yan doesn't have to worry about the bride price again. Yan promises to himself to not let his parents suffer anymore from now on. Suddenly a digital notification appears in front of him, with the message that is congratulating the host at first for successfully bounding with the eye of the Lord God system. The notification says that the novice guide's task is to obtain 100 million assets and owns his own industry. For this task, the time limit is 24 hours and there are still 21 hours before the task is cut. The notification tells him to carefully complete the task or else he will lose his life. Yan Mu is shocked by this and as he is walking home, he looks at the sun sign that appeared on his hand while thinking that he just came to life and for the system to tell him that he only has 21 hours left of his life must be a joke. He comes out of his thoughts when he hears a girl shouting at somebody to let her go and recognizes the voice as Meng Yao. Meng Yao is his childhood friend and in his last life. Meng Yao's mother was cheated out of half a million dollars playing mahjong so at that time they come to stay at his home but he did not receive her call because he was at Fang's house at that time. Later he heard that they couldn't pay the money back and were forced to die by the lone shark so in this life he is determined to save their lives. He rushes to help Meng Yao, who is being harassed by some thugs as they ask her if she wants to call Yan Mu. Yan Mu quickly punches a man who was holding Meng Yao, forcing him to let her go. She rushes to hug Yan Mu, while the man is enraged after getting punched and goes to attack Yan Mu. Meng Yao quickly warns him as he was facing the other way, and Yan Mu turns just in time to grab the man's hand who was about to punch him. Yan says to the man how can he call himself Wuji's heavenly father with his trifling skill while the man shouts due to the pain, asking Yan to let him go. 
The other man rushes toward them threatening to kill Yan but he stops him saying that they are here for the money and if they dared to move one more stop they will never get any money. They are still concerned a little because he looks poor to them and asks him if he even know how much half a million is. Yan replies that in three days he promised to give money in three days. The thugs add that there are also medical expense of brother Laozi, plus 1,000 interest and by the time there is no money they want the girl to cover the debt. Yan replies that he will bring them money in three days, but they will have to get down on their knees to apologize to her. The thugs leaves after that saying that their boss is the boss of Fidelity Real Estate, and if they couldn't arrange the money, the boss will cut both of their legs personally. Yan again sees a digital window, telling him that 20 hours are left for him to complete the mission, and that the host's life is related to the survival point. The current value of the survival point is very low and the host body will randomly appear adverse symptoms. Yan is confused by all this, thinking that this is too mysterious as his life is determined by survival points which are just a virtual value. He comes out of his thought when Meng apologizes to him saying that it is her fault, and they will find her wherever she goes but Yan tells her to not worry saying that money is not a problem and he will make them apologize to her in three days. Yao suddenly starts to feel dizzy and stumbles forward, crashing into Ming. He quickly apologizes to Ming while thinking to himself that this seems to be a random adverse symptom which means that this system will really dictate his life. Meanwhile, Feng's family is sitting together, inquiring Yilixil about why Yan is not picking up her call. Her father gets angry and goes to slap her saying that she even can't control a man. Her mother stops him saying that he shouldn't be so eager to punish her because it seemed like something was wrong with Yan today. His father understands the situation, agreeing that Yan seems different and maybe it is because he got accidentally rich. He then pulls Elixil by her arm, saying that she should go over to Yan's place so no one can snatch him away from her. Her mother also encourages her to go there, so Elixil agrees to go meet Yan while thinking about his strange behavior. Yan is at his home with Ming when the doorbells ring and Ming quickly goes to open the door, surprised to see Elixil there. Elixil ignores her and quickly rushes toward Yan, asking him for a clear answer to what he did at their house earlier. Yan replies that she shouldn't have come here because there is no longer any relationship between them. Elixil gets angry by this asking him if he is seeing someone else because how can he change his mind just because they raised the bride price. Yan replies that he is not seeing someone else but it is impossible for them to have a relationship and says to her that she should also leave her family house, maybe she can live a little more freely this way. Elixil angrily leaves the house saying that she will make him regret this. Ming is also confused by the sudden change in their relationship but Yan tells her to not worry about it, and then leaves after telling her that he is going on a trip and she can stay here tonight. Yan goes to Zhongcheng City Street, where the results of the lottery are being announced and his father is also waiting there with other people. Yan stands at a side silently while reading a magazine and thinking that this system is supposed to let him buy Fidelity property, which is the most convenient business to invest in. He remembers the company Fuda, the largest business capital of Zhongcheng City, and imagines that if he can take over Fuda he will be the richest person in the city in just a few years. The next morning, he visits Fidelity Real Estate and is surprised to see a lot of people there as the company went bankrupt some time ago. Just then the system sends him another notification, telling him that there is only a little time left before the mission deadline, and that if got very low survival points, adverse symptoms can occur randomly in the host. He suddenly starts to feel pain in his heart and regrets his decision to go to Tay Bank to cash the bonus check and waste an hour there. Some people pass by him as he is standing there so he inquires them about the situation and fidelity. They tell him that they are on strike because appears of wages are not issued for almost half a year now. Yan says that it is common for the construction sites to default on wages so why there is such a big fuss about that here to which the man tells him that they heard that the big boss run away with money and the second boss Kong Rui also lost a lot of money so there is simply no money to pay the wages and everyone is to get a statement to get the money out. Yan is surprised by the information and asks them if the news about the big boss running away is true to which the man replies that the news is from inside the company, and they are here to block the way because Kong Rui is coming here today. Yan quickly rushes away after thanking the man while thinking that there is still a chance to survive and he can complete the task in less than one hour. Just then Kang Rui comes there in his car and workers start to shout at him to pay their wages. His bodyguard is angry with the situation and suggests that they should call some people to handle the situation, but Kang stops him saying that it will only result in people getting injured. Their discussion is interrupted by the sudden knock on the window as Yan tries to get their attention while only 25 minutes are left for him to complete his task. Yan gets inside the car without permission, startling them, and quickly introduces himself to Kang saying that he has business with him. 
The guard orders him to get out of the car saying that if he didn't follow the order he will bear the consequences, but Yan calmly replies that what he is about to say will be about whether Kong will spend the rest of his life in jail, and asks if they are sure they want him to leave. Kang replies to him that he doesn't want to see the wages in arrears, and he already figured out how to prepare for the money so Yan can't force him to do anything. Yan says that they misunderstood him because he is here to send them money. He explains that he will help them to make up for all the financial losses including outstanding wages, but he is going to buy Fidelity properties and will be the owner. Kang in reply asks him if he knows how much the economic loss of this project is, and just filling the wages of migrant workers will be a hard task for him. Yan tells them to just say a number, saying that he doesn't have much time to spend with them. As the system notify him that only 10 minutes are left for him to complete the task, Kang tells him that he will have to pay $50 million. Kang calmly replies that it is not a big amount which angers Kang and he tells his bodyguard to kick out Kang. The bodyguard tries to push him out but Kang easily pins him to the seat of the car, surprising Kang with his strength. Kang then says to Yan that even though he doesn't have enough money to pay the workers but he still has no time to waste and if he is only trying to make fun of them, they can be polite with him. Yan says to Kang that he doesn't have to worry as he will take his land even if it is $50 million, and he can pay them right away while thinking to himself that he can earn double in the future by taking all the land Kang owns as mentioned in the news. Kang still doesn't believe him, but Yan says that he doesn't have much time and they should make a price. Kang is still thinking about the offer when the system notifies Kang that he has only 3 minutes left so his sense will start to disappear soon and if the task is not completed in time he will die on the spot. Kang says to him that if he can come up with 20 million right away, he will transfer the piece of land to him immediately. Yan couldn't hear Kang but he figures through the shape of his mouth that they are talking about 20 million and said that they should go through Tay procedure directly as he is in a hurry. Kang tells his bodyguard Kai Bao to quickly complete the transfer procedure with Yan while the system starts the countdown of 10 seconds. Yan quickly performs the transaction through his card but the system still doesn't inform him that the task is completed and he still feels that all his energy is gone. Just then the system notifies him that his task is complete, and tells him that he got 10 survival points that can unlock the primary system mall, and an additional bonus of 3 survival points. He is happy to complete the task in time and the system tells him that he needs to consume 1 survival point for daily survival and he can also purchase the points in the system mall items. His thoughts are interrupted when the protesters suddenly throw the brick at the car, shouting that they can't let Kang leaves there. Kang turns to Yan, asking him what they should do in this situation to which Yan says that since the money is already in the account, they can send it to the workers directly. Yan is thinking of a way to save survival points by himself as he got only 13 days to live and doesn't know when the next task will be issued. Meanwhile, Kang turns to Kai Bao, ordering him to tell the workers that they will be paid tonight. Kai Bao gets out of the car and announces that wages will be paid tonight which surprises workers as they are not paid for the last half year but they still decide to give them one last chance and decides to come back tonight if the wages are not paid. After the workers scatter away, Kang tells Kai Bao to drive them back to the company so they can take Yan to see the plan. They go to the Fidelity building, where they show Yan their previous planning book but he says that this plan is no longer needed and tells him to not do anything with the plan area he circled. He then tells Kang to immediately buy another plot of land, to which Kang replies that this piece of land is not worth buying to which Yan replies that he doesn't need to worry about that. Yan knows that place will be the next commercial area due to a lot of new school buildings at that place so he tells Kang that after buying that place, it is important to build a large shopping mall, specialty restaurants, a snack street, a bookstore, and a quick hotel. He says that the decoration must be new and he needs to find a new construction team that is stable and of good quality. Kang assures him that he will complete the job so Yan tells him to not worry saying that he will treat him well. Kang then tells him that there is an investment reception at the Jinpeng Hotel tonight, and he heard that there are many projects there and if he is interested, they can go there together. Yan agrees to go with him, thinking that survival points come from income and investments so if he can invest them successfully, he would be able to get a lot of survival points. At night he goes to the Jinpeng Hotel, where he sees Ilixil in bold clothing with another man and is surprised to see that she had moved on so quickly. Meanwhile, Ilixil is forced to be with this man and is thinking that if Yan didn't reject their offer, she wouldn't have to be with such a stinky man. They make eye contact but silently pass by each other. The old man walking beside Elixil bumps his shoulder with Yan intentionally, and then makes fun of him saying that a poor boy like him shouldn't be in a place like this. The old man gets angry when Yan also makes fun of his dress and threatens him saying that he doesn't know who he is talking to and asks Yan how can he dare to pick up on his girl, right in front of him. 
Ian ignores the old man and instead asks Ilixel what is her relationship with the man but she ignores him saying that it is not his concern. The couple then goes away after the old man says to him that he can only dream to chase such a beautiful girl. Ian is left standing there alone, thinking to himself that Ilixel is not as innocent as he thought her to be but he decides to stop thinking about her as their relationship is already broken. He then turns to go to the 14th floor, where the investment reception site is. The system shows him that his next task is to host invest and sign a business tonight, and he will get a reward of 10 survival points for that. Yan is hesitant after seeing the task because according to him it is not easy to sign a business with Kong Rui having done research beforehand as several companies that have since soared in prominence, have come here and they are bound to be in his pocket. He moves to go to the designated floor but is stopped by the guard who says that there are strangers allowed in this place. Ian replies that he knows what this place is to which the guard replies that then he should know all the people who came here are big bosses and can offer tens of millions of dollars so he is not qualified to go in. Ian tells the guard that he is also looking for corporate investment, but guard still doesn't let him in saying that he is not even dressed properly to go inside. He is still standing there when Ilixel comes there with the old man named Ma who recognizes Yan and asks why he followed them. The guard also agrees with Ma saying that he tried to make the kid go away but he doesn't listen and said that he is here to make an investment. Ma again makes fun of him saying that he should first earn money to buy more clothes and that being thick-skinned is a good thing but he chooses the wrong place for that. The guard again tries to push him away but he steps aside, angering the guard with his stubbornness. Just then Kang comes there, grabbing Ma's attention while Yan turns to Ilixel and asks her if she is doing all this for money but she replies that it is none of her buissness. Meanwhile, Ma congratulates Kang for his company getting a new owner and heading to the right direction. Kang replies he is relieved now as he was very worried about HSI company earlier and then asks Ma about his buissness. Ma replies that his company is not doing good and tries to ask for his help but Kang interrupts him when he notices Guard rudely talking to Yan and quickly leaves to go there, telling Ma that they will walk some other time. Kang then goes to the door and calls Yan, surprising Ma by calling the young kid with so much respect. Ilixel is also surprised by Kang addressing Yan as Mr. Yan, while Ma goes to Kang and asks him how can call such poor boy as his boss. Kang replies that he shouldn't judge a book by its cover because Yan is now their big boss of fidelity. Ma is shocked to find that Yan is the new owner of the company and quickly goes to apologize to him, saying that he didn't know about his identity. Yan ignores him and says to Kang they should go but Ma stops him as he Ludi says that it was his fault in what happened today and he would do anything that Yan ordered him to do and also wants to invite him to enter after the investment meeting as an apology. Yan only tells Ma to go away and as he walks away, Ma thinks to himself that Yan is so arrogant, and he will soon find a way to deal with him. They go to the investment meeting site where Kang asks Yan if he have a target for this investment cocktail party. Yan replies that he have no one in mind yet while thinking that the first thought of several enterprises have been surrounded by people and it seems that the opportunity, is not much. Yan notices a board of a company named Nebula Group which surprises him as he didn't expect to meet the leading companies of the internet in the previous world, but right now it is still a small company, and no one is asking for it. He is then approached by Nebula Group company's owner who gives him his card and explains how his company engages with internet products like wireless routers. Yan is surprised that an owner of a company is personally recruiting investors, leading him to believe that his success is not without any reason. Kang sees the card in his hand and says that router is a foreign production and the domestic market for it is not estimated much. Other bosses also start to talk about how their routers are too far ahead of time. Jang politely replies to them that he understands they are not too optimistic about the future of the router but they have to believe him as these are the only early days of the internet era, and a few years later wireless networks will soon be able to occupy the market. The boss ignores his talk and says that only a fool will invest in his company. Just then Yan announces that he will invest 15 million in the router company, shocking everyone but he says that he is very optimistic about this company, as he believes that with the fast development of the internet, Nebula will have a brilliant future. Ma steps into the discussion and starts to talk about how Yan is an incompetent kid who is not worthy of acquaintance. Kang stops him saying that even though they are considered half colleagues it would be better if he don't say such things about Yan but Ma is unfazed by this as he says that they all know that they are under the Sma Ihuasia Dragon group. Kang heavily in debts and deliberately defaults on the wages of civilian workers, and he actually wanted to take the subsidiary company to cash in on the money, and then leave junctions on his own. Everyone is shocked by the revelation as they know Kang's character is not good so Yan must be the same as him. Ma then says to Kang that if he was smarter he shouldn't have been working under Yan. Kang is furious by Ma's statement and goes to attack him, 
but Yan stops him and turns to Ma, asking him if he is confident that he can't invest $15 million. Ma replies that he is confident in his statement so Yan says that they should make a bet on him investing $15 million and about the truth of fidelity. Ma confidently replies that he will make a bet as he is sure that Yan will lose this bet. Yan says to Ma that if he loses the bet he will have to kneel down and admit his mistakes in public, slap himself three times, and tell the truth about the fidelity, and he will do the same if he loses the bet. Ma is reluctant to actually make the bet as it will put his credibility on the line and seeing him hesitating Yan asks him if he is scared. Before he could reply another voice comes from the side saying that everyone has been waiting here for half a day to watch the show and he can't spoil everyone's fun this time. The man then comes into view, and everyone recognizes him as the Tang Ning, the second young master of the Tang family Ma asks him why is here. Yim remembers that Ning is the head of the Tang family in Zhongchen city and in their last life. The raw materials of the Nebula group were purchased from the Tang family so it would be good for Nebula's future development if they get to know him in this life too. Ning says to them that they don't have to worry about him and should continue with their bet but Ma quickly says that they were just fooling around Ning says that it is hard to come across an interesting thing but they stopped as he arrives and asks Ma if he has any problem. With him, Ma quickly says that he admires Ning and has no problems with him and he will make a bet. In the meantime, Kang tells Yan to think twice before making a bet but Yan only replies that he has to make the bet, and searches for his card. As he is looking in his pockets, Ilixil approaches him saying that he shouldn't embarrass himself and go away but she is dragged away by Ma who says that the people like Yan cannot be relied on and he should already give up. Just then Yan finds his card and happily turns to Jang saying to him that being a human is the same as doing business as it is all about honesty, and he has money in his card so if they are willing to cooperate, he can transfer the investment money to him right away. Jang happily agrees to his offer, which makes Ma angry as she snatches the credit card away from Yan's hand saying that he really likes to pretend because how a person who is trying to invest $15 million still uses this ordinary card. Yan snatches the card back saying that they can try this card if he doesn't believe him. Jang quickly comes forward and takes Yan's card to get the payment but when he tries the card, it shows that it has insufficient balance. Everyone is shocked by this as Ma makes fun of him and tells him to apologize and kneel in front of him. Ning also interferes saying that the most important thing is to be honest and be willing to bet. Ma quickly dives and saying that he agrees with Ning and wants everything to be decided by Ning. Kang quickly says that there can be a mistake with the system due to the large transaction, and they should let him contact the bank so they send over a professional to take a look. Ma refuses to listen to him saying that he is a busy person and calls the guards to restrain Yan. Yan also says that they should wait for the bank staff, and asks if he is afraid of him but Ma says that he is not afraid of anyone and tells the guards to surround him. Ma then says to him that it is his last chance and he should kneel in front of him Yan refuses saying that it is a little early to say this and besides he didn't lose so Ma should be the one kneeling down. Ma is furious by all this and tells the guard to put him down but Kai Bao steps in front of him saying that no one can touch Yan. Everyone's shocked when Yan suddenly jumps, kicking all guards in one hit and putting them on the ground. Ilixil and Ning are shocked by Yan's ability to take down all the guards so fast. Just then someone from the bank team comes there saying that they received a call from Kang and came here to check the situation. Ma tries to say that it is useless for any staff to come when his business is still not finished but Ning interrupts him saying that since they are already here, it is not bad to wait a few minutes and let them check what is going on. Ma says that he will give them a chance for the sake of Ning as the bank team checks the issue with the card. The bank team found that his card has zero balance and asks him if his recent running capital has reached $50 million. After a positive reply from Yan, the bank employee tells him that it is possible for his card to be frozen if he moves too much money, and as long as his funds are legal, they can lift the freeze for him and he will upgrade his services. Ma is shocked by this and tries to say that Kang has staged this but Yan ignores him and talks to bank employees saying that his sources of funds are all traceable and asks them if he can continue to transfer funds in a situation like this. They tell him that his bank card can already be used normally and he can come to the bank to apply for the customized gold card. Ma shouts that it doesn't count until he transfers the money to Nebula. Yan gives his card to Jang again who successfully performs the transaction this time. Kang turns to Ma asking him what he has to say now to which Ma replies that they just don't like him and are cheating so he could kneel in front of them. He is suddenly pushed to the ground by Ning who says that he just said people should know their mistake and do not change so he should now do what he have to do and don't waste more of his time. Ma turns to Yan and starts apologizing saying that he shouldn't have provoked him like that. Yan asks him if he already forget the other clauses of bet to which Ma quickly replies that he remember all Finskinkle doing, kneeling, slapping and apologizing. 
Yen says that he have to tell the truth about Fidelity too as he can't let Kong keep taking the blame for it. Ma confesses that he said Fidelity has been acquired but it was all because he was jealous of Kang's luck and talked nonsense. Ma hears everyone talking about him and leaves from while promising to himself that he will remember the whole Yan dig for him and will return it one day. Yan is then approached by Zhang who thanks him for investing in his group and says that he will not let him down. After talking to Zhang, Yan goes to Ning and thanks him for his help tonight saying that he can ask Yan for any favor in the future. Elixil who is watching all this thinks to herself that Yuan has really developed but if it were not for him she wouldn't not be here today. She remembers her family telling him to go to investment meeting with Mr. Ma, and when she tried to refuse her father said that she have to bring him a son-in-law otherwise it is no use of raising her. Elixil leave from the meeting as Yan thanks his acquaintance. He gets a notification from System, telling him that he earned 10 survival points after completing the mission, and from now on 10% of the survival points earned by him each time will be extracted by the System for upgrading. Yan is annoyed by the fact that the System is not only controlling his life but is also charging fees to him. He is suddenly approached by Kai Bao, who tells them that the workers at the factory are making trouble again. Kang asks Kai Bao why it started again as he already told him to get the finance to send down the salary to workers. Kai Bao replies that the wages are paid but now they are blocking the entrance of the company, saying that the company has changed hands and what would happen if there is no work in the future. Kang immediately turns to Yan asking him what should they do because there is still some time before the new project starts and they can't just keep them like this. Yan replies that they will go back to the company first and see their what happens. They go back to the Fidelity building where some people are trying to push away the workers saying that they have been paid so they should get out of there. One of the workers pushes the man onto the ground as they all say that they want to meet Kang as the salary is paid but Tay Project is stopped as soon as it is said. So what will they do after that because it is like they have become unemployed suddenly. The man is furious after being pushed to the ground and stands back up with the knife in his hand and stabs the workers. All workers surround the injured one shouting at each other to call an ambulance. Just then Yan reaches there and tells Kai Bao to find out what all the noise is about. The thighs are still threatening the workers when Kang comes there and asks what is going on and who are they. The thugs say to him that they are helping him to establish his authority and it is not a big deal as he just needs to compensate a few tens of thousands of dollars. Yan goes to a worker and asks him if they called an ambulance to which the worker replies that they called it but the man is bleeding so much that it is impossible that the ambulance will get there in time to save him. The workers then sit on the ground devastated while saying that once the project stopped, many of them had no work to do. He says that his daughter is sick and the doctor told them that she needs a minor operation. But now that he lost his job, he doesn't know what he will do with her surgery. Just then the worker taking care of his injured colleague shouts that he has stopped breathing but the ambulance still hasn't arrived. Kang tells Kai Bao to tie up the thugs who are still smug that they helped them. As Kai Bao goes to take care of them, Yan goes to check on the injured worker and through the system finds that even though he is still breathing, it is hopeless for him to live now. Yan thinks that if the system can control his life, there must be a way to save other people's life and asks the system if there is a way to save the dying worker. The system tells him that after an upgrade, the resurrection medicine will be available in the system store, which can be exchanged for survival points. Yan checks the system store and finds that there are only three pills strength, agility, and stamina which are useless in this case, and asks the system if there is any other way to save the worker. The system replies that he can consume survival points to extend this person's life by minutes to ensure sure that he can survive, the system calculates and the host will consume survival points. The system then tells him to reply with confirmation if he wants to save someone's life and notifies him that this function can only be used once so he should consider it carefully. Yan tells the system to confirm the service while thinking to himself there is no difference between him and those thugs if he watches the man die here and also his death here would be too much for a new building. The system notifies him that his survival points are deducted as the person starts to breathe properly again. Kai Bao brings the two tied up thugs to them and quickly says to them that they are doing this for the good of the company. Yan speaks for the first time, asking them what are they talking about, and when the thugs pick up their heads to see him, they are surprised to see him there. One of the thugs asks him if he is the kid who can't get the money to beg Kang. Kang is confused by this and asks Yan what is going on who only replies that he should ask them. Thugs are irritated by his nonchalant behavior and quickly tells Kang that this kid's aunt played mahjong and owed half a million load which he promised to pay back and tomorrow is the day for him to pay it. The other thug says that it is true and it is not a problem if he can't pay the money because his sister is beautiful, 
and they can sell her on the black market. Kang is enraged to hear this and asks them if they are trying to get him killed by treating his company as the black club. Kang then turns to Yan, saying that he know what was the situation of the company before, and Ma told him to let them go with him saying that he have a way to get the money oh he had no choice but to send them away but he didn't wanted to hurt anyone. Kang tells him that now that fidelity is acquired by him there is no more foreign debt. Yan moves toward the thugs and kicks them, surprising the workers watching the scene, who are happy that they guys who were bullying them for a long time are being beaten. Just then the ambulance arrives there and after checking the patient doctors tells the workers to not block the road because he needs the blood transfusion and they have to shift him to the hospital quickly. Kang turns to Yan asking him what are the next arrangements to which Yan says that they will resettle these workers first. He says that they don't need to find another engineering team for the project they are doing today so they don't have to worry about work. The workers turn to Yan asking him if they were owed half a year's salary before and if they stayed would it will happen again, and what will they do if this time they ran away with the money. Yan says to them that they don't have to worry as the company will draw up an employment contract with them to ensure the payment of their salary as well as their personal safety at work and they will receive a dividend at the end of the year. The workers are happy with the decision to sign the contract while Kai Bao says to Kang that it is the first time he heard that he has signed a contract and paid dividends to civilian workers. Kang replies that without him the company would have collapsed, to which Kai Bao adds that he is rich and capable. Kai Bao then asks him what should they do with the thugs but he instead tells Kai Bao to look at Yan who is approaching them. Yan says that they have to deal with the situation in a way that it is not harming the company's reputation in the future, and the civilian workers who were injured tonight. His medical expense will be paid by the company so that this situation will not occur again. Kang replies that he will take care of the follow-up and make sure that nothing will go wrong. Yan then leaves after saying goodbye to them while Kang says to Kai Bao that this kid is a man with a goal and is better at business than him. He says that Kai Bao should wait a little bit as he will definitely change his mind as they all believe in him once. Yan goes back to his house thinking of his parents are back home yet and is welcomed by Ming who asks him why is he so late today. Yan replies that he is late because he had some company business to take care of. Ming replies that she noticed he is working harder than before and is because he is marrying Ilixil and have to double the money. Yan tells her to not think about it and says that she will take her to a place tomorrow, secretly hoping to fulfill her wish of living in a big house. She asks him if he can tell her where they are going but Yan only replies that she will find out tomorrow and tells her to go and take a rest. Yan is lying on his bed looking at the tattoo on his hand and thinking that the Eye of the Moon Master's God system controls his life but also can continue the life of others and has many other functions, but is that all? Suddenly the tattoo on his hand starts to glow as the system tells him that the host will enter the system space when the surrounding environment is detected as safe. His room transports him to another plane and asks him if he is ready for the inheritance. Yan is confused by the mention of the inheritance and notices his reflection on the water floor recognizing it as himself before the rebirth. The system tells him that his rebirth has AC triggered the collapse of space-time, and his daily consumption of survival points at the same time used to maintain the stability of space-time but space-time i.e. affected by external forces now needs him to accept the inheritance of the Lord God otherwise the world will soon be annihilated. He is shocked to find that Tay world will be annihilated but before he could understand what is happening, the system notifies him that the preparations are underway to pass on. He shouts that he is not ready but the system continues to work and tells him that after the end of the inheritance, the system level is limited and no more tasks will be issued to him. Yan thinks that the system pities him from the start and just then the system tells him that inheritance is completed and he should check the host's personal panel. He checks the panel and is confused to find that inheritance progress is still 1% even after it was completed. The system notify him that due to the lack of basic attributes of the host, temporarily cannot get all inherited abilities. The next day when he wakes up, Yan is annoyed by all this and says to himself that he should forget about this because as long as he is alive, he will be able to figure out everything one day. Ming comes to his room with fruits and reminds him that he has to take her somewhere today. Yan replies that he almost forgot about it and they will go later to the place. They walk down Zhang Cheng's city street and Ming spot Elixil with Ma, as she seems unconscious while he is taking her inside. Ming says to Yan that it seems like there is something wrong with Elixil but Yan tells her to not care about it saying that it is her own choice. They go to the Blue Water Bay sales department but Ming still continues to ask him what happened between him and Elixil. Yan tells her to stop talking and says that she should go to see the house first because later the sales department will be closed. They are welcomed by a female employee who asks them if they are looking for a house. Yan tells her that he wants to see the villa but she replies that he can't afford to buy a villa and if he wants to see a house, he can go to the small house there and as long as he pays the down payment, he can pay the rest slowly. Ming says to him that this is under the Shenzhou group and the houses here are too expensive, does he really wants to buy it? 
Yan replies that he wants to give her a villa as she always wanted to live in a big house. The employee again interrupts him asking if he knows how much villas cost here and really wants to buy them. Yan replies that he wants to buy a villa and ignores Ming who says that they should go back. The woman again says that they are wearing cheap clothes and want to buy a villa which angers Ming and she says they should leave the place. Before they could leave, a man comes there who recognizes Yan and shows his surprise at seeing him after a long time. Yan recognizes the man as Zhu Fei, his junior high school classmate who is now an accomplished businessman, and greets him saying that it has been many years since he saw him. Zhu Fei says that he really hasn't changed a bit and he remembers that his family conditions are not good as his clothes are bought on the ground and he can wear a random shirt for years. Yan ignores his statement and instead asks him what he is doing now while remembering from his previous life that Zhu Fei done a small business that went bankrupt in a few years. Zhu Fei says that he has a small business and wants to buy an extra house to keep and asks him if he also came to see the house and it must be a small apartment. The employee quickly jumps into the conversation saying that the house also symbolizes the status of a person and people like Zhu Fei are the young talent. Zhu Fei disregards her comment while laughing and then turns to Yan saying that he has a business to discuss with him later, and is hoping that he will be free later or else he can choose the house first as it will not take long for Yan to do so. Yan replies that he has nothing to do and Zhu Fei comes first so they can discuss the business without any delay. Zhu Fei goes with the employee to see the house while Yan tells Ming to wait for him saying that he will be back after making a call. Zhu Fei decides to choose the apartment and makes the payment of $2 million right away while thinking to himself that he finally has the chance to be more popular than Yan through money. He notices Ming standing alone and goes there, asking her if Yan ran away because he couldn't afford to lose to this person. He is interrupted by Yan who comes there saying that he wants to buy a house, he can't run away from here and something came up so he had to make them wait a little bit. Zhu Fei asks him what kind of house he wants to buy, and asks if he needs his help for reference. Zhu Fei then says to Yan that his father is still at the construction site so he should send him to Fei as he will let him move two bricks less and gives a few hundred dollars more, as it is a good virtue to help people. Ming is enraged by his statement and says that he can't trample on someone's dignity just because of little money and Uncle Yan earns money through his hard work, so Fei is not more noble than him. Zhu Fei replies that he is just helping him, it is not trampling his dignity and after all money is the hard truth of the society. Ming again goes to say something else but Yan stops her and says to Fei that he appreciates his kindness but if he said something out of tune, he shouldn't blame for the consequences. Zhu Fei replies that he is king to help him but they have to educate him because he is so poor that he can't understand anything. The employees murmur that Yan is making a big deal when he can't afford a house so Zhu Fei tells her to call the guards and kick him saying that he is ruining my mood. Just then a bank employee comes there and gives Yan his gold card. The housing department, manager also comes out and asks about all the noise which the employee Ajin quickly replies that this man Yan can't afford to buy their house, but is still trying to stir things here. Yan ignores them and shows his card to the manager who is shocked to see the card and quickly bows to him, apologizing for the trouble they caused him and says that she will be personally at his service. Ajin says to her manager how can she allow a man like him to stay here but the manager ignores her and again apologizes to Yan saying that her employees are not aware of Taishan. Zhu Fei also steps into the conversation, saying that he is a big customer who just bought a house and they should respect him not Yan. The manager turns to Zhu Fei and asks him if he knows the gold card in Yan's hand but Fei replies that it is only a crappy card. He says that he is a VIP customer of the bank and snatches the card from Yan's hand but is shocked to find that Yan is an SVIP customer. Zhu Fei is speechless and asks Yan if he stole it but Yan just ignores him while thinking that there were two villas in this place. After a few years, the house price soared and it was not a problem to earn several times. He turns to the manager and asks for the price of the two villas right in the middle to which she tells him that the price of both villas is 10 million. Yan gives her his card and tells her that he will buy the apartments. Ajin quickly takes the card, saying that she will show him the apartment but Yan angrily tells her to put the card down saying that he can give his $20 million business to anyone as performance except her. The manager says to Ajin that she will personally handle the transaction for Yan and she doesn't have to come to work from tomorrow onwards. Zhu Fei again approaches Yan saying that he didn't expect that Yan is so well mixed now and they should go out for drinks later. Yan doesn't reply to him and the manager instead calls the security and instructs them to take him out. Yan then goes to the system and asks if the skill of luck is able to check the luck of the others and how he can use the skill. The system informs him that the lucky host's basic skill allows him to observe the level of luck of a person or an object as he wishes, 
and the host can use this skill to identify treasures. Yan is satisfied to find that as long as he wants, he can see other people's luck, and these skills seem quite practical. Zhu Fei, who is being dragged out by the guards, continues to shout that Yan shouldn't be this angry and they can later go out to have a meal together. Yan sees a black aura around Zhu Fei and says that due to his black aura, recently everything must be unlucky and advise him as an old classmate that he should act more carefully or else he will regret it. Zhu Fei is dragged out by the guard while Ajin begs the manager to not fire her saying that her father has been sick for so many years and if she didn't have a job he will die. Seeing all this situation, Ming worriedly comments that she seems so pitiful, so Yan tells the manager to give her another chance. Yan then turns to Ming and is surprised to see the golden aura around her thinking that her luck is golden which means that she must be doing well in life. Just then some old ladies approach him, saying that he is a handsome young man and it is a shame that he has no girlfriend but they can introduce him to someone if he wants. Yan quickly hugs Ming, saying that she is his girlfriend and that he brought her here today to buy a house. He then whispers to Ming to cooperate with him saying that he doesn't want to go on a blind date, making her blush with his statement. Suddenly Yan gets a message on his phone and he is surprised to see that it is from Elixil. Yan opens the message in which Elixil tells him that she is at Shengshen 606 and asks for his help. Yan realizes that maybe she didn't willingly go to the hotel with Ma, and after seeing the message Ming also says that he should help her because no matter what is going on between them, if he didn't help her now he will regret it later. Yan says that it is no longer his concern but Ming says that it will be really late if he didn't go and she will wait here for him to come back. Yan finally agrees to go and leaves after telling her to wait for him and not run away anywhere. At the Shengshen Hotel, Elixil is in the room with Ma who tries to force himself on her saying that he has money and power and her family introduced her to him so he can look at her. She tries to stop him but he says that she shouldn't act to be innocent when she came with him willingly and forces himself on her again. Before he could do anything, the door to their room opens and Yan comes in. Ma is shocked to see him and asks how he got here, to which Ming replies that it is not important how he got here and that he had filmed what Ma was doing just now. Ma rushes toward him, intending to take the phone from him but Yan easily hits him, sending him down on the floor. Ma is angry by this and says that he will not only sleep with Yan's woman but also find someone to give him some good beating so he will know how tough he is. Yan kicks him again, asking him to repeat what he said to which Ma says that he is no good and no woman will want to look at him. Yan again goes to kick Ma, who quickly apologizes saying it is his fault, and begs him to not hit his face again. Yan leaves him and goes to Elixil who complains that her body is getting hot. Yan figures that she was drugged and picks her up saying he will take her to the bathroom so she could wash up and clear her head. He leaves her in the bathtub saying that he is leaving now but she can call him again if he needs him. Ma is still outside the door, thinking that he will see how many times can Yan save her. Yan again comes here and kicks him again asking if he wants to just leave. Ma angrily says to Yan that he is hitting him but he didn't even touch her so what is he trying to do? Yan replies that he should not forget how he got Elixil here in the first place and this video is the proof of that and he can go now if he is not afraid of the video. Ma asks him what he wants to which Yan replies that he has the money and wants to use it to buy the woman so now if he wants to keep the video a secret, he has to pay some money. Ma replies that he is working with Elixil to ruin him and does he really thinks he will get money this way. Yan calmly says that since he refuses the offer, he shouldn't regret what he will see on the internet tomorrow. Ma says that does he think Shengshen Hotel listens to everyone's words, the manager will not transfer the surveillance for him and he is not falling for his tricks. Yan shows him the emergency card of the hotel saying that he will not believe him when he tells him that he knows the hotel manager. Ma asks him how he got the emergency card but he ignores his questions and instead asks him if he thought about the offer while thinking to himself that it was good that manager Yang came with them and they were able to get this room card. Ma finally gives in realizing that his life will be finished if these videos go out and asks Yan how much money he wants and 5 million would be enough. Yan replies that he wants 40 million, shocking Ma who says that he can't pay that much and instead accidentally offers 30 million. He quickly corrects himself saying that he can pay 10 million but Yan says that he will have to pay 30 million and he hopes Ma can keep his word or else the pictures will be exposed. Just then Elixil comes out after taking the shower and seeing Ma still there, saying that it seems that 30 million are not a problem for him. Ma leaves after saying that he is unlucky today so he is in her hands today but he will see her later. After he leaves, Yan asks her if she is okay to which she thanks in reply. He says that he will leave them, but Elixil stops her and asks if it is true that he wants TP spend 15 million to invest in Nebula Group. Yan instead asks her didn't she sees him transferring money to Nebula on the spot. She again asks him how and where did he got so much money suddenly. Yan is angry with her question and asks if money is more important to her than feeling and says that if she values money so much, then why is she with him again? He can leave saying that it is safe now and she can go back home. Yan goes back to the Blue Water Bay sales department and calls Ming who immediately asks him if the matter has been resolved. 
he says that the matter is solved thanks to the manager Young this time. He then asks Ming if she is anxious to which she replies that she is a little bit anxious mainly because she is getting off work and manager Yang has been here with her all the time. Yan then turns to Yang saying that he will pay the money first and do the other procedures tomorrow as it will take her too much time. Meanwhile, Ma is sitting in his office, injured by Yan's beating, and is getting massages from his workers. They ask him who beat him like that saying that they will find someone to clean up for him, to which Ma replies that it was the same person that beat them up. His team is angry that Yan tried to bully Ma this time but he asks them to forget about it for now and instead check the Fang family first as he wants to see the Fang family's daughter while thinking that he should get this girl first before paying 30 million dollars. Ilixel's parents are sitting in their home waiting for her to come back as Mr. Fang says that it has been a whole day and she still didn't come back. His wife replies that if he is a real man, he should know that by now and it must catch Ma's attention and let Ilixel be with him all night. Just then Ilixel comes there and her mother rushes to her saying that it was so late that they thought she wouldn't come back. Ilixel replies that they didn't have to deal with it and tells her how Ma drugged him and tried to rape him in the hotel but thanks to Yan who saved her. Listening to Yan's name her father gets angry and asks her what she wants with her as he already broke up with her and is now creating trouble. Ilixel replies that Yan seems different from before, he invested 15 million in the investment meeting and she heard that he also bought a real estate company. Her mother replies that it seems like he has developed and they can't let go of such a good son-in-law. Ilixel tries to say that she has broken up with her but her mother quickly comes to her saying that she is forbidding her to say that and he has money so she must bring him back. Somewhere in the city, in an internet cafe, a boy is playing a game when he is approached by another boy who praises his game and asks him if he is a pro. The boy replies that he just plays casually, which can be compared with the professionals, but the second boy says that he is humble as his level is extraordinary and suggests that they should befriend and play two games together. They play the game until night when they are approached again by a man who praises the first boy's playing style. Listening to this second boy says that there is the point in just competing, so they should make a bet, and whoever losses will have to buy a pack of cigarettes for all of them and the winner will be called dad. They play games for three hours and the first boy loses after that and goes to leave, the cafe thinking that his girlfriend is already asking for money. And now he has met two scammers but he is stopped by the group who says that he can't disobey the rules and goes to beat him for that. Meanwhile, Yan is at home looking at the system, while talking himself that he paid a point for buying a house, but it consumed one point yesterday, and this system is a scam. The system tells him that because it has extracted the survival account required for the upgrade, he shouldn't be concerned as it shouldn't be a problem. Yan asks what can they upgrade to that requires so many survival points to which the system tells him that the appearance of the host after the upgrade is determined by the host's idea however the upgraded system has an entity and tells him to pay attention to his own thoughts. He is surprised to find that it works based on his thoughts, and is interrupted when his phone starts ringing. He is surprised to see that Ilixel is calling him again but still picks up the call but finds that it is Ilixel's mother on the phone. She says that she wants to tell him something, and even though he is suspicious about what this family wants again, he still asks her what is it. The woman says that he always wanted to marry Ilixel, and it is not impossible but their family has two conditions. She says that the first condition is that all of his bank cards must be handed over to them and the second is that as soon as he enters the door of the Fang family, he will be immediately of the Fang family and whoever in the family has any problem. He must help them unconditionally and as long as he fulfill these two conditions, he can marry Ilixel. Yan calmly says that there is one thing he wants to say and when she asks what is it, he shouts at her, telling her to not bother him again. The next day, Yan and Ming go to the Blue Water Bay sales department again where the manager brings him the contract and tells him that all the formalities have been sorted out. When he doesn't reply to her, Ming asks him what is wrong with him as manager Yang has been standing here for half day, and he is ignoring her. Yan quickly apologizes to the manager who says that it is okay and asks if he needs to check the documents again. He says that there is no need for that and leaves after manager Yang tells him that if they have any questions they can come to see her. They are walking back home when they bump into Ilixel again who after seeing him says that he is really here. He asks her what she wants while thinking to himself that even though he already made it clear but Fang family still doesn't give up. Ilixel says to him that her brother Zioyu injured someone in the internet cafe and now the other party wants them to take 5 million to ransom him. Yan replies that her brother's trouble is not his problem and goes to walk away but she stops him again saying that they can go to the hotel as he always wanted to have further contact with her, and she agrees to it now. Yan harshly snatches his arm from her hold and says that he liked Ilixel who knows self-respect and has a bottom line, not the current Ilixel who can sell her body for money. Ilixel starts crying and says that her brother is still in the cafe, 
and her family can't raise that much money so she has no choice. Yen says that he will help her on only one condition that they will not bother him again with Fang's business, but Ilixul says that they are her family and he is the only one she can find. Yan says that if this is the case it is not necessary to talk about it and walks away with Ming who asks him if he is really not going to help Ilixul as she looks really sad. Yan coldly replies that he has nothing to do with her which surprised Ming as she says that he was not such a cold person before, and asks him if it is true that his long-standing relationship with Ilixul is over. Yan replies that it was worn out in their previous life and then tells Ming to go home saying that he is going to an internet cafe. In the internet cafe, Xiaoyu the gamer boy is getting beaten by the boys who say that he is daring for hurting their friend and ask him where is the money. Xiaoyu replies that they are all in this together and set him up. The group just lied and says that his family was the one who provoked Ma and if he didn't bring the money, they will cut his finger and send it to his house. Yan finally comes there and the boy sitting at the door tries to stop him saying that the internet cafe is closed today but Yan punches him and goes inside where everyone is surprised to see him there. After looking at the people, Yan says that it is good there are a lot of people here as he can try his hand. Yan looks into the system for a strength pill and decides that three survival points for a pill are enough to deal with all these thugs. Xiaoyu says that he must have come here because of his sister and he should quickly get the money to pay these thugs. One of the thugs also says that he still owes him half a million, and it now become a million and he should bring the money and they will let Xiaoyu go. Yan says that why he should give money and after hearing his statement Xiaoyu shouts at him to stop making jokes and quickly pay the money. Yan is furious by this and dares all of them to try saying another word. He slowly moves toward them, and is not phased when the thug tries to threaten him with the knife, and instead punches him, easily knocking him down with one hit. He then starts to beat up other while one of the thugs call Ma, telling him that Yan is here. Xiaoyu is happy with Yan's fighting, thinking that they don't have to pay ransom now which means that the money will be his. When Yan is done beating all of them, Xiaoyu approaches him saying that he should have come earlier if he can fight so well, and if he doesn't want to be pursued by his family. He should get down on his knees now, apologize and give him the ransom. Yan asks if he is serious to which Xiaoyu says that he is serious and that if he didn't follow his order he will let his sister go with another man. Yan goes near him and slaps him, then says that if he doesn't want to go home, he just has to say that, and if his sister didn't beg him to help him, he would have never bothered to come here. Yan is about to leave the place but is stopped by Ma who is there with a lot of thugs, and orders them to get their weapons and beat him up. Yan figures that there are too many people and if he can't hide he will be killed here. Just then the system notifies him that on his request the system has redeemed an agility pill for him, annoying him that they are changing his pills based on their own initiative. He quickly dodges the attack from a thug and seeing him trying to fight back, Ma says that he should just accept his defeat as he can't beat all of them. Using his agility pills, Yan moves at a super fast speed, quickly beating all the thugs and standing behind Ma, saying that it seems like he has spoken too soon. He then kicks Ma, pushing him on the ground, and says that he heard Ma wanted to kill him. Ma replies that he said that because Yan has been targeting him and can't he just say this to get back at him. Yan replies that it makes sense but he is the one who is getting targeted and pushes Ma on the ground, asking him who is he going to pay him for all the time he has wasted because of him. Ma begs him to not hit him, saying that he will pay $20 million. Yan accepts the offer saying that there is a bank next door, and together with the $30 million from yesterday, all the money will be sent to his account immediately. They go to the nearby bank and after Yan receives a message of receiving $50 million, Yan tells Ma that he can go now. Ma leaves while planning to get 50 million back from him someday while Yan turns to Xiaoyu and asks him if he can go home by himself. Xiaoyu shouts at him saying that will remember the pain he suffered today because of him. Yan asks him if this is how he treats his lifesaver to which Xiaoyu says that if he didn't provoke those people, he wouldn't have suffered today. Yan says that he really knows how to turn things upside down and tells him to go away. Xiaoyu runs away, threatening to tell his parents about today's event while Yan turns to the system to look at his survival points. He is surprised that he just got 50 million dollars but there is still no change in his survival points to which the system tells him that because the 50 million is not properly sourced. It cannot be counted as the host's income and the system has collected all his upgrade resources. Yan angrily says to the system that they have gone too far as they first bought the pills on their own and now want to take all the survival points for themselves. The system replies that it is all for the good of the host as when the system is successfully upgraded, the host will get better benefits. Meanwhile, Ilixil is at her house when her mother scolds her that she is of no good as she can't even handle Yan Mu and asks if she wants to see her brother get killed. 
Ilixel replies that she can't do anything as Yan has completely given up on her. They are interrupted when her brother comes back home and her mother rushes to attend to him, asking why he came back so suddenly. He asks if she is not happy to see him to which Mrs. Fang quickly replies that she is very happy and asks him how he gets beaten up. Xiaoyu says that Ilixel sent Yan here to redeem him but he only was there to embarrass him instead. Ilixel is surprised to find that Yan went to save him, while Xiaoyu shows his bruises cheek to his mother saying that Yan beat him like this even though the people who kidnapped him weren't this tough. Xiaoyu then asks Ilixel if she knows all of her money comes from Ma. Mrs. Yang asks her if this is true to which she replies that she thinks so because she heard Yan Mu asking Ma for 30 million dollars when he went to save her. Her mother says that if this is the guy she used to like as he uses her to make money, and then is suddenly hostile toward him. Ilixel says that she will go to him right now and asks for the money while thinking to herself that this seems to be the real purpose of Yan Mai being together with her. Later Yan is having lunch with Ming who asks him why he looks so upset from the time he came back and asks if he is being bullied. Yan quickly replies that it is not the case and tells her to eat saying he is Ifni. She asks him if he is still thinking about Ilixel and it is the thing she can't talk about before she could get a reply they are interrupted by Ilixel, who angrily marches there and asks Yan what is he planning to do. Ming replies to her first, asking why is she here or if she wants to eat with them but Yan replies to her instead of Ilixel, telling her to not worry about that because she is not going to sit with them. He then turned to Ilixel and sternly asks her why she came here. Ilixel slams her hands on the table and says that first he beat up Xiaoyu, and now he is here with another woman, what is he doing? Yan replies that Ming is his sister to which Ilixel tells her to explain why he beat up Xiaoyu. When he went to save him and is it because she used him and he was upset so he took revenge on her brother and then find a woman who was not as good as her to piss her off. Yan asks her if she is sick in her head but she still ignores him and continues to say that he can't spare money to save Xiaoyu and is it because the money is only for blackmail, and in reality he have no money. Yan replies that he thinks it was Wei Tong for him here and she should remember that whether he is poor or not, his money is not for them and he will not spect a cent for a bunch of vampires like her family. Ming is confused by all this fuss happening in front of her while Ilixel continues to put blames on him and says that he is worse than her because he turned to another woman as soon as the broke up. Yan finally has enough of her and sternly talks her to stop talking. He then says that what is wrong with him being with Anther Woman and asks her if she still thinks he can't get over her. He says that if she insists on listening to her brother's nonsense, then it is her choice and tells her to don't come back to him in future. She still doesn't leave and instead says that he never considered her and just wants to use her to which Yan asks her if she really have no distinction be between right and wrong. Ilixel instead goes to slap him while shouting at him to tell what makes him treat her like that but he grabs her hand before she could slap him and says that they have already broken up so she needs to stop acting like an insane person. Ilixel finally leaves from there after telling her that she will make him regret this later. After HSE leaves, Ming tells Yan to follow her but instead of replying to her question, Yan apologizes to her for scaring her like that Ming replies that it is okay and asks him if Ilixel really doesn't have any relationship alone. Yan tells her to not worry about it saying that he is sure Ilixel is thinking about how to get back at him. Later he goes at Febula's group of office and meet their CEO Zhang, who thanks him for his kindness saying that the project that lacked capital before has been profitable since today and tells Yan to take a look at it. Yan reads the paper and is happy that finally there is some good news. Yan sees the report and says that he remember that the company does not have a special material supplied so why would they choose poor quality materials? Zhang replies that to ensure the quality of their products now, they use new materials but before of the bad profit, the supplier can't get the money back and he refused to cooperate. Yan is thinking that this a big problem he overlooked while Zhang explains to him that in the development test, only the machine needs to be able to pass the test and there is no high requirements for the material. Listening to this Yan tells him send someone to pick up the treatment from the communication company, as they will definitely need a router. Zhang is surprised that he didn't think of that because communications companies have to deal with a lot of information daily and just requires routers to transit signals in batches. He is still worried about material but Yan tells him to leave it o him and he will find a better partner as soon as possible. Later he is walking down the street while Tia Chengking that the Tang family is best to be Nebula's partner, but he is not sure if I will agree to cooperate with him or not. He comes out of his thoughts when he hears the shouts of a woman and sees Ajin being dragged by a man on the street. He recognizes her from the sales department of Blue Water Bay and is confused about why she is at a bar now. Some people tell the man to put the girl down or they will call the police but he refuses to listen to them saying that they should mind their own business or else he will kill them. Yan comes there and forces the man to leave the girl while saying that it is too much for him to be doing this in the bored daylight. 
The man says that does he wants the woman that Ma likes. Yan is surprised to hear the name of Ma again and says that he owe him the next time they meet and then squeezes the man's arm in his hand. The man shouts in pain so Yan finally lets him go and tells him to go away, saying that he should make sure to not appear in his sight again. Yan then turns to Ajin who thanks him for his help and he asks her why is she here and not at her work at the housing sale center. She tells him that today is her day off but her dad's condition has worsened recently and he needs money for the surgery so she is using her free time to work a second job. He then asks her if she knows Ma to which she replies that she don't know him well but he just wanted to support her the first time he saw her here but she refused so he kept coming after her, and today if Yan didn't saved her, they would have taken her with them. He says that it is okay and she should go home to take rest. As she goes back inside the bar, Yan calls Lai Bao and tells him to find someone to keep an eye on Ma as he should be in the hospital right now. Meanwhile, in the hospital Ma is lying on the bed injured, talking to Ilixil who is sitting beside his bed. He says that he have made the arrangement for the bar as she said and then tells her to sit a little closer to him. Ilixil instead replies that he is anxious but Yan has just taken the bait which means that the good shows hasn't started yet. Ma says that what should he do if the bar miscalculates, as Yan came to him again at that time but he didn't deserve the loss. Ilixil says that he should not forget she is the one helping him to take revenge and says that Yan is very deep in love with her so as long as she apologized to him, he will definitely be soft. Ilixil is later standing by a window as she calls Yan and says that she wants to invite him for a dinner. She says that at the hotel today, it was her fault so she want to apologize to him and it will also be their last parting. She says that let's meet at her restaurant they had their first date at and after hanging up the phone, she turns to Ma and tells him that everything is fine and Ajin will leave it to him. She then says that she wants 30 million when the job is done and he will also gets what he want. Meanwhile Yan is sitting at his house, thinking that it seems like two people want to work together to set him up. He then asks System how many survival points does it really need to upgrade, to which the system tells that it need almost 20 more points to complete the upgrade. He again asks how many survival points can be exchanged for 30 millions to which the system says that 10 survival points can be exchanged for 10 million so 30 million are enough to upgrade the system. Yan is shocked to hear this as he is thinking about how many survival points the system secretly deduct from him, and then says to the system that they should take this opportunity to upgrade the system as he also WNAT to know what it can really become. He then call Kang and asks him to find some information for him saying that it will be useful for them tomorrow. At night he goes to the western restaurant to meet Elixil, who after seeing him quickly says that she ordered all his favorite food and asks him if he would like to have a drink. She then apologizes to him for the recent events and before he could reply to her. The system notify him that the system detected the sleeping pills and the red wine but the host has received the inheritance of the Lord God so there is a certain degree of poison resistance, and this amount of medicine will not pose any threat to him. Yan picks up the glass of wine and after taking a sip says to Ilixil that it doesn't matter and they should let the past go. Ilixil adds that she never though they would end up like this and she had imagined about how their life would be after marriage. Yan says that after marriage it should be her family asking him for money until it crushed him and forces him to die. She is angry by his statement and is waiting for him to pass out as he asks if he said something wrong. She replies that she only have a brother to which Yan asks her if her family have a throne for him to inherit. Ilixil says that he is her only brother so he shall be spoiled while thinking to herself that Ma said that this dose will be enough for three people but it is not working on Yan. Suddenly Yan passes Ooh, And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.